In this lecture, we're going to be looking at the basic definition of vectors and several different ways to represent them geometrically, both in two and three dimensions. One of the core objects that we study in linear algebra is something called a vector. And a vector is just a one by n matrix, so it's a specialization of something we've already looked at. Um, just as when we dealt with other matrices, all of the entries in our vector are going to be drawn from some field, for example, the real numbers. And the way that we distinguish a vector from a scalar, which was just a constant in our field, is by using either bold face letters or a letter with a little arrow over top. So we write this, if we've got a vector with n entries in it, we write it as sitting inside r to the n or rn, vectors sitting inside of an n-dimensional space. Um, order does matter, so we have to remember that vector, the vector 3, 2 is not the same as the vector 2, 3. So consider the following three vectors. Um, we're going to be looking at really two different geometric ways of representing vectors here. Um, one is each of those vectors corresponds to a point with some coordinates. So we can picture vectors as really just picking out individual points inside of some two or three or n dimensional space. Or we can picture our vectors as sort of an arrow running from some point out to the coordinates of our vector. So when we say some point, when we're representing vectors where we're just we're not giving any, given any start point, um, we position our vectors with their tail, the, the, the non like arrowhead point of our vector, down at 0, 0, and the head of the vector with the coordinates of the vector itself. Let's consider just two of the vectors that we were looking at on the last slide, namely the vectors u and uh, v and w. So these two vectors appear here in both their uh, both of their geometric representations. So we can picture these either as points or as arrows stretching from the origin out to the coordinates of the point involved. So we define the sum of two vectors as the sum coordinate wise. So to get the sum of these two vectors, we add up their two x coordinates, so 4 and negative 2 add up to 2, and our two y coordinates, which are 3 and 4 respectively, so add up to 7. So our vector sum is the vector appearing there from 0, 0 out to 2, 7. We can picture geometrically what's happening by imagining for our first vector, v, taking our vector w and attaching the tail of vector w to the head of vector v. So geometrically, addition coordinate-wise is equivalent to gluing these vectors together end-to-end. -end. And similarly, we actually could have started in the other direction. Since we know that addition is commutative, vector addition, which was just defined coordinate-wise, should also be commutative. So if we started with our vector 2 and added our vector 1, we should see another vector that also gives us our vector sum. And so this is not some special case for these two vectors that we picked. Turns out for any vectors, this rule for vector sum, called the parallelogram rule, gives us a way to compute and visualize sums of vectors. Now let's look at how we can examine vectors in three dimensions. So I have up on screen a visualizer letting us look at a vector in three dimensions. So the coordinates of this vector um, are 5, um, 5 and x, 4 and y, and 3 and z, which to make this a little easier for us to visualize, let's try displaying all um, the original vector. Now this time, with the parts of the vector in each direction, um, decomposed for us to look at. So this is, um, we can see that this vector has x coordinate 5, y coordinate 4, if I could line this up, right, y coordinate 4, and z coordinate 3. Looking at this vector by himself again, so let's look at how, what vector sums look like in three dimensions. So to this 5, 4, 3, let's add the vector maybe 2, um, 2, 5, um, 6. So there's now a pair of vectors for us to look at. And we can see how in three dimensions, 
the rule for um, parallelograms actually applies here as well. So our vector sum for these two vectors is going to be 7, 9, uh, 9. So there's our, our shot of 7, 9, 9. Um, let's make it a little easier for us to see how the parallelogram rule applies by drawing a vector that goes from the end of our second vector to our vector sum and the end of our first vector to our vector sum. So there's a way to visualize the parallelogram rule in three dimensions. So we see after we, we drew in these vectors, making it a little more clear, we can see that in three dimensions, the parallelogram rule, or the idea that to take the sum of two vectors, the way to visualize this is adding the end of one vector to the tail of the other. So if we view these as little arrows, our first vector, we just take our second vector put its tail at the head of the first vector, and voila. We have a parallelogram in two dimensions where our parallelogram is sitting in a plane spanned by these two vectors. I realized I've used a couple of words that we've only started looking at in class, so the next video lecture is going to be looking at linear combinations of vectors and what we mean when we say the span of a set of vectors in some space. See you guys next time.